Hi, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Regardless of whatever part of the world you're watching this from, you're highly welcome to the official YouTube page of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the True Room Transcript Unit in Abuja. My name is Adedwin Kikelomo Ajiboye. We believe that the video you're about to watch will edify your soul and bless you mightily. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, so you could be blessed by more of our content. God bless you. So let's jump right into today's message. Praise the Lord. By acceleration, you will accelerate. And in the place of fullness, you and I will become the expression of fullness, not just as what fills us, but that which from us becomes the outflow of the anointing. The anointing beautifies. The anointing, the anointing strengthens. It makes whole what is broken, what is fragmented, what is in a state of disrepair, ill repair, depression, frustration, aggression, and a contrary mindset. They say evil communications, evil minds and thoughts towards us corrupt, corrupt good manners. But the blessing of the Holy Spirit isn't just to make you a spiritual expression that needs to be managed because sometimes you know we go into places and we, we don't express the Holy Spirit with the beauty of the Holy Spirit he is not loud he is gentle and in that he brings us to that place of bringing beauty so in Jesus name as you hear this word may we truly be brought to that place whereby the anointing we are beautified in his fullness in Jesus name Isaiah 5 the 19 is our word on acceleration that they will hasten the work. The eyes of those who see it would know that this is the Lord's hand. And in this month of fullness, he has appointed us that same word and that same work and action. John 10.10, 10, it talks about the thief that only comes to do one thing, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The Passion Translation says that a thief has only one thing in mind. It is his default setting. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I, says Jesus, I have come to give you everything in abundance, in fullness. More than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. You and I will overflow. Because where his fullness is, there will be overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. Ephesians 3, 20, 21. He says, now unto him who's able to do immeasurably more than you and I can ask or think. He says, exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. According to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church that is here. And every one of us who represents the church, not a physical place, but a lifestyle expression in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Church, say amen. To all generations by Christ Jesus. By the anointing and the anointed one. Because he is not just the archetype. He is the prototype of every one of us. He is the firstborn. And every one of us with him are the expression of the firstborn church. Again, church is not a physical place. It is a lifestyle expression through obedience and submission to the word of God that speaks, prophesies, and gives us a very explicit direction in which to go. Fullness for the month of April 2024 from the throne room in Jesus mighty name. In the place of fullness, in the place of acceleration, we must understand that the power of our identity in Christ is fullness. Fullness. That is who Christ is. If you and I do not operate in the fullness, the full operational manual of his anointing and the anointed works that he did, then we are not expressing the dimension of the identity that Christ in us is called to be and we are called to be from him. No one can connect to the glory, the goodness, the love of God, the righteousness of God online or anywhere if first we do not represent, represent that which is his fullness. Christ Jesus is never half measure. Everything about his expression comes 
to the overflow. It comes to the place where it's not just about one thing. It is multiple. It is multiple. He's a multiplier. Anyone who comes to him and connects with him has one encounter will go away as a mission of encounter. You become the testimony. You become the testifier. And through you, there will be testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Testimonies everywhere. Because what he does with one, he doesn't just do for the one time. He does it for all time. That is Christ in you and me. The fullness, the expression of kingdom of heaven. You and I, it's not just about a born again moment. It is about a kingdom here in earth. How? Not as church physical, but as you, the church, expressed in your experiential connection through anywhere you are placed, connecting with by conversation or just by observation. People watch and see you. People hear you and their lives are filled with that which infills you, the spirit of the fullness that fills all in all. Christ in you, the hope of glory in Jesus' mighty name. And so the power of our identity in Christ is what delivers us from crisis identity. Identity crisis is what is happening all over the internet. So people are posting and presenting as what they are not. They live with lies and people embrace the lies. And these lies become an altar and they change the form of godliness and people deny the power because there is no power when what we follow is not Christ but the crisis that has been created by people who are separate from Christ but claim they are Christ's. We do not claim to be Christ. It is by what we live and move and express our being in that we overflow and become the definition, the design, the expression and the beauty of Christ in us. The fullness of his beauty. That which beautifies us is a pattern not from Sunday school, not even from what I'm preaching. It's what in you has quickened you by the Spirit to become the dimension in the human flesh. Because that is how come we say concerning this Christ Jesus, amen, that it was Him who embodied everything to do with grace and truth. See, it says, according to John 1, 14 to 17, and this word became flesh, reality, the experience of a lifestyle. And dwelt amongst us like you and I are dwelling. He dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory. This is the testimony. When people see you, see me, may they see the glory that is the church, that is Christ. We beheld his glory, his fullness, the expression, the overflow. We beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. When we stand, may we stand as a distinction separate from what is commonly understood and called, but does not have the form of godliness, church. And he says, full of grace and truth. May the fullness of grace and truth be our testimony. Not just what we say, but what people say, glorifying our Father because of their connection, contact, and experience around us. Oh, this one is full of grace and truth. This one walks in the righteousness that is of God, not human rights of men. This one is standing by a standard that is the banner of God's love. His love is not a feeling of ecstasy. His love is not euphoria. His love is action, obedience, because this is how God works. His eyes running to and fro the whole earth to show himself almighty, full of might in the behalf of those who walk in obedience, in fullness of submission. That is obedience in Christ to him and his righteousness. The fullness of Christ in you is the identity of Christ to our generation. And so when we receive a word directing us to speed into fullness, we are being directed to give full expression to the identity of Christ, not just in us, but through us to our generation, to our community, to our families. That's how we become saviors in families. That's how we become the intervention of a nation, a solution where there is a problem and the kings don't know, the leaders don't know what to do. They look for you and they say, we hear you have revelation, you have strategies. Yes, you may be young, but you have the wisdom that has come of the gods and you are able to say, it's not in me, humility but God shall give an answer of peace and there shall be an answer. 
There shall be an answer through you. Because you walk in the power of the answerer. Because he answers every situation. God will give an answer. He will give, he will give and he will not stop giving. Because that is his will. That no generation will be lost. There will always be a Joshua. There will be a Joseph. There will be an Esther. There will be a Dio. Put your name. There will be a you. And there will be a church standing till he comes. There will be a throne room in Jesus' mighty name. And we shall raise many as of the stars in the firmament. Because everyone here connected to this altar. We are children of the living God and his word. And he has said this year, accelerate this month with fullness. He's not calling you to a partial representation. A partial. He said, now we know in part. But you shall come to that place. That location where you will know in full. You will be known even as he knows you. Ah, may we know ourselves. That I may know him. That I may, that we may come into the knowledge. It's a saving knowledge. Not just in that you go to the world and say, I'm preaching to you right now, Jesus. And I want you, if you are not saved, you are dying, you are going to hell. If you have to exert so much energy to convert a soul, you have to take yourself back. Our lives alone should preach this, Jesus. Your kindness, your acts of kindness should preach this Jesus. What is the fasting? It's not a show. It's a giving. It's a connection. Oh, we are being called into a place, a dimension of expression of Christ, not just in us, but through us. The fullness that filleth all in all. Have you filled your neighborhood? Have you filled your office? Do they know when you come in, there's a fragrance, not just your designer older color? Or older papa. No. There is a fragrance we become. When we become the fullness of Christ. That filleth all in all. Nothing missing. Everything will speak. From the outward. To the inward. To the language. The communication of our tongues. It won't just be a religion. No, it will be a connection. It will be a conversation. It will be something that they say, oh, huh, what did she say again? How did she say that? Yes, this is it. And this is the power of the fullness at work. You know what fullness is? In the Camaro, you see pastor doing all those different um, illustrations every month. Whether it's the speed bike, whether it's the speed boat, whether it's the speed car. Speed! requires engagement otherwise it's just another car the difference between the car that speeds and the car that is just moving along is engagement the controls the engine the mechanism all of that but even no speed car is going nowhere without fuel so where are we getting our sauce otherwise it just looks like sauce it just looks like it is packed outside. It's a speaker going nowhere. May we not look like that. Having a form of godliness, having a form of speed and acceleration going nowhere. If that car never moved with all the speed potential in it, it will never become the exponential expression of Camaro. Please give me the names. You all know what's the name? Vinduzi, Tom Cruise, all of them. When they are moving with those cars, you see all of the action of the stunt drivers. You and I are called to be stunt drivers with the anointing. We are called to do stunts, to take risks that other cannot risk. Even if it's going to be like actor, you know actor, no, they die. Go. And in Christ you live. In Christ, you move. In Christ, you speed. You have your acceleration, your fullness, have your being. Let it go. Accelerate. With fullness, hold nothing back. In the place of acceleration, the power of your identity in Christ Jesus. In fullness, the speed, the momentum. You know, where there's speed and you keep speeding, there's increase. There must be increase this year. You cannot remain at the same level of speed. You are at January. Come on, we've got to let this thing go. You've got to break the boundaries. Break the barriers. You've got to go. 
Somebody will say, but ah, if you over speed, you can crash. There's no crashing in Christ. If he gave the instruction, go. Let nothing hold you back. Fearless is not reckless. Fearless is not careless. We will be led of the spirit. He will be the, please, what's the actor's name? Vin Diesel. Uh, Vin Diesel. Thank you. He will be the Vin Diesel. The Holy Spirit will be able to put this all together. And you will find you can go. Oh, you can fly. You can cruise. You move from cruising altitude to speeding altitude. Hallelujah. You move like a rocket. You leave the stratosphere of what is common in Jesus' mighty name. So you look at it where there is speed and acceleration. In fullness, there must be focus. Oh, there must be focus. You must be completely focused. You cannot, in this season, in this year, at this time, with this word, be distracted. You must hold to your controls. You must hold to your steering wheel. You must get yourself positioned and engaged because you are moving your gear to full throttle. And he will lead us and we will not crash. In that place of leadership, he needs teachership. You and I need to be teachable. You need to be ready to hear, to know this is the way by the coach Jesus and the Holy Spirit telling you to go. You are going to take risks. Speed requires risks. You're going to take corners, bends. You're going to find yourself doing some things which ordinarily we don't do. Step down on it, do this, and you find yourself doing a, three, a 360 degree turn and facing the other direction. It's the actor, but in the leading of the Spirit. Acceleration. Speed must be directed for it to be properly evaluated, appreciated, celebrated, and rewarded. There's a place where speed becomes an art. It becomes a demonstration, a form of excellence and distinction. Formula One, that's who you and I are called to be. The formula of God in A1 position. Where all eyes come and see you. Because you are not just a formula of man. We are the formula DNA of God. And he's calling us. He says, I need you in fullness to accelerate. Nobody accelerates at half, half, half engine. The engine is moving in full. And you know the winners, they come out with trophies, all of that. You and I will come out with trophies in this year of acceleration. God has an expectation for every one of us. Ephesians 3, 20, 21, it still goes on. He said, he said, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you, in me, and accomplish all this. All this I'm describing. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. You see, when you fear, when we carry anxiety, you will not be able to carry this word and become its manifestation. No. No. Like Jesus said, you'll just be like something that is lukewarm in the mouth. It's not hot. It's neither hot nor cold. It's not full. It's just, he will spit it. God forbid you and I will not become spit out. You will have the savor, the taste, with the heat that he will enjoy. Where there is speed and acceleration, the design, the visible velocity. People are watching you zoom. And you know the power of acceleration comes with a sound. There will be a sound that will go with you. He says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest requests. You must, your most unbelievable dreams, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. It fills you up to overflow, and then it accelerates you. You will go in this might in Jesus' name. The power of God's might is the power to take flight. In that place of taking flight, you take flight like an eagle, not a chicken. No matter how a chicken moves its wings, the best it can do is flap, squawk, move from one place to the other. And the reason why you will ever see a chicken doing anything that looks like flying, it is fear. You don't want to fly the flight of fear. You want to fly the flight of an eagle. I'm not a chicken, I'm an eagle. 
an eagle comes, the storm comes, and he looks at the storm and he faces the storm. And then, as he faces it, he focuses and he goes right into it and rises through the storm above it. You are not called to be a chicken, you are called to be an eagle. And that's why I said there's a cruising altitude and there's a soaring altitude. You heard what Daddy Geo ministered last week. You and I are not called to be chicken, you are called to be eagle. And if going in that flight is going to take you to a place where you need to strip everything off to become the new eagle, go there, enter retreat, and then only come out when your new feathers to fly have grown. Break that beak, that familiar mouth you've been using. And in Jesus' name, if you're in Jesus' name, I'm praying it's not producing anything. Please go to that crack in the rock. Everyone who has connected and encountered Jesus becomes an encounter for Jesus and through Jesus. More than they expected. They become more. They are not only healed. Through their wholeness and their healing, they become testimony of healing for generations in Jesus' name. They become famous. Everyone who was ever healed is famous from the Bible. So the encounter, the connection, it brings you that fullness that becomes the overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. NLT, that same word, I love you. May you experience the love of Christ. That is too great to that is too great to under oh my God. That is too great to understand fully. This is the NLT. That is too great to understand fully. You may not understand it fully, but walk in it and you become the fullness in Jesus' name. As you reach for it, as you learn from it, as you draw from it, you will become the expression of it. The fullness of all that filleth all in all. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Somebody say amen. You are coming from God. You see where there is fullness of grace and truth like it was in Christ Jesus. It means there is room for nothing else. There is no room for self-pity, self-depression, self aggrandizement, self showing on the online, you just become the expression of the fullness. You will be full and not a fool by this word in Jesus name. We are called to fullness, not foolishness, by the instruction and leading of the Holy Spirit. That which guides takes women away through gossip. It said foolish women talking. It said these women need counselors, women of wisdom to give direction. Even the Bible recognizes that we women, our tongue, if it's not managed, becomes foolish in its communication. A foolish woman will, um, 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 will destroy her own home, her house, her opportunities. Because they said a wise will build, so the foolish will tear down with her mouth. But it's not just about having a home. It's about your destiny. May God help our tongues in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And so it is. John 16, he says, however, when the spirit of truth shall come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you of things to come. See, you will hear the spirit telling you, this is how to go, this is where to go, so you will not end, I and myself and yourself will not end in error. This speed we are being called to, this fullness we are being called to, needs wisdom connection with heaven's instruction. And it only comes from the Holy Spirit. And this is where I'm going. To live a life full of the power of God, you must live a life of fear. Fear of man, fear of failure, fear of your past, fear of all that, and come into the fear of the living God. And this beginning of wisdom will connect you to the person and the friendship of the Holy Spirit, by which you shall be filled with the Spirit and not with those things like wine that distract you, that take you out. Friends with the wrong influence around you or, uh, or a desperate dream to, to, to go to UK and it's not okay. Yes, we are driven by things. We are not led by the Spirit. And once you are driven by that thing, that is not the thing like Mary had connection with and conception of, you will be taken out. Many, many of us in Christ in God, yes, we profess by faith. This is who we are. And this is how we are believers born again. And there are umbels out there. 
But you see, man that is honored and does not understand it shall perish as a beast. You can be a prince and still die like a servant. It's an error proceeding from the sun. Where you see that servants are on horses and princes are walking. Who are they talking about? You and I with a royal priesthood inheritance, but you are not walking in fullness. So we end up not just walking, but holding the donkey for the servant. It will not be our portion. You will come into fullness. A full measure of understanding and wisdom by which you shall rightly divide all things. And it only comes through the infilling of the Holy Spirit and a walk, a connection that receives instruction and direction from the Spirit of truth. He will guide us into all truth. He will lead us into all truth. Jesus said, I need to go that he may come because he is the one. He will teach you. He will show you. He's your UPS. He will do all things for you. He will speak to you. Say, this is the way that you're going. And not like this. And that is how we go from how to wow. How shall these things be? And all of a sudden, the wow is that blessed and highly favored. Why? There was a connection. God is calling us to connection. And that connection can only come by the communication with the spirit of truth from our spirit. Christ in you and me. Fullness for the expression of his glory. Whatever has been in reproach, let it go. But God is now calling you and it's never too late. No, no, no. God is never late and it is not too late. Because that critical one moment and connection will turn every error into his pleasure. Has he not promised that the years, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the locust and caterpillar have eaten? God wants to do something in one month that has reproached and humiliated you for how many years? God wants to end that story that people look and mock you for. He wants to turn it into a testimony that people will come and seek your God for. Where is your church? Who's your pastor? What are you still waiting for? Mangerebo sakakaka. First Corinthians 2, 10 says, God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches out all things, even the hidden things, deep things, secret things, critical things, things that you need for critical thinking and strategy to answer your boss tomorrow in the office. He will give you right now. All it takes is the revealer of truth. The revelation of the Holy Spirit. The fullness of understanding will come. The inspiration of the Almighty. The breath of the Almighty will give you understanding. You will know. You will know not just Him. You will know what to do. How to do. Where to do. And why to do. He said I should challenge us. We are not going to test God. You will test yourself. You will see that this thing works. That your accelerator works. There's nothing wrong with the anointing and the word that has come forth. God just needs you and me to connect with it and to try it. It's not a trial of faith. It's just a test and your testimony is going to jump at you. There is a testimony coming to you right now by this word in this service. And all it requires from you is that test yourself. You will see you have the capacity. You have ability you never knew you had. I qualify you. I, they did, I qualify you. Go in this might. Go in this fullness. Knock on the door of your boss and say, Sir, I have an answer. I have a solution. I prepared it like this. And you present it like, and do it with humility. You are not your boss's boss. You are your boss's destiny helper. You think your boss doesn't need that intervention right now? He does. You have it. And you're looking at him and say, He doesn't even know what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's doing because you've not showed him what to do. Go and show him what to do. Even if he cannot say thank you, he will appreciate you. Even the hidden things, if we are not led by the Holy Spirit, how do we have dominion or power over ungodly, unholy spirits? How do we express God's fullness? Fullness. How can we be led of the Spirit, walk in faith, manifest sonship of God over other gods and the works of man? How do we manifest fullness without the Holy Spirit? It's not possible. We will be full of pride. We will be full of, full of self. We will be full of fear. We will be full of emotions. We will not be full of the divine wisdom of God. 
We need this fullness. It can only come from God. It cannot come of ourselves. And that which fear does, fear takes you out. Fear limits you. Fear reduces you in the face of the Goliath you have to pull down. Oh, I'm challenging us today. I'm challenging myself. We are called to operate on four. Full measure, pressed down, running over. Because this is what the, the, the investment is. When you're praying full, it will be invested in you again. I want to believe, I want to believe, I want to believe. That those ten water pots that now became the wine pots. Became pots that at the very least, even if nothing came out again. They are pots that I will still go to Israel and see. They became famous pots. The bread and the fish. Five bread, four fish. 12 baskets came. Do you doubt that one basket went home to mama? And probably after that, everybody wanted to eat her bread and fish. You see, one contact will bring a multiple expression. There is no limit, no holding back. It will bring fullness where all you had was five and four. God will give you a basket and more. The God of fullness is the God of the manifestation of your acceleration. It is the Holy Spirit of truth working with us that will give us by the infilling, the instruction, the direction. Pastor loves to minister this word. Romans 8, 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus up from the dead dwells in you, he who raised that same Jesus up from the dead will also quicken your mortal bodies. How? By fullness. You and I become quickened and we become quickness. You will raise others up from dead. This is just how God is. God doesn't hold back. He multiplies his supply. In Jesus name. So John 5, 14, 15 says, this is the confidence, the fullness. Because when you have confidence, you know, you have a full, you have a full presence. I'm not talking about pride. You just have this, you, this assurance. You have this full assurance that we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us in whatever we ask, then you have the request of which you come in fullness, not in fearness. This fear is a killer of the expression of the overflow. God is not confused about his commandments and instructions. We are the ones who confuse his language with our language and override his instruction with our human intelligence. If we don't understand our principal's instruction, we will never have a principal result. You can never please the one who sent you. My will is to do what my principals have told me to do. It doesn't matter what any other person's opinion is. This is not about opinion, it's about instruction. What has God asked of you? What is this altar telling us to do? Go and do it and see now that God will give you the expression. You will become the testimony of fullness with acceleration in your community of action. You have expectations you do not want cut off. God has expectations too. And that is why he has given it to us by command, by instruction. And if we walk in this command, we walk in revelation of his expectation. Our expectations will therefore never be cut off. You see, the most dangerous thing with power of acceleration is that the engine cuts. Then you're going nowhere. The cut off comes when we disconnect from the instruction. Fullness comes when we remain connected. There will always be inflow, fullness, and outflow. You will become a dispenser of the dispensation of fullness from this altar. We must become. We are not just here to have a show and a form. We are here for a demonstration in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Oh, somebody praise God. Just, you know what? Just give God that moment. Just thank Him. Thank Him for what you are hearing. See, you must hear and believe. You must hear and believe. Please tell somebody I must hear and believe. You must. Say you must. Oh, you must, you must, you must. Let me tell you, it, where we, we, we operate fear is a contrary manual to the power of faith. Now faith is. Faith is full. It's here. His ministry is like a petrol station. Or, you know, it's there. Now you are here. It's pumping into you. But you choose to believe. Ah, oh. 
Oh, you are not a learner. You are a follower of Christ Jesus. You know, learners can be fearful. But they always have a teacher. They should have a teacher with them. That's the Holy Spirit. And right now, even as you come into that place, where you begin to manifest confidence and expression of authority and dominion for fullness and for acceleration. Never forget, your life will always be characterized by different things. But you see, when you doubt, you say double-minded man, James 1, 6 to 8, he, he will have double trouble. That's the summary. He's unstable in all his ways. Let that man not think that he will inherit anything. So even though you're a believer, you don't believe a baptism class, you've done everything, you are, you are a worker, you are doing it all. Once you doubt this word, you will not inherit this word. God forbid. You must come out of April manifesting fullness. Which means, if you're going to manifest fullness in April, oh my goodness, the deliverables will be manifesting in me. A few people caught that. Hallelujah. There is an inheritance. It's not coming at the end of the year. It is coming in May before half year. Receive it in Jesus' name. So your life must not be characterized by crazy, shaky fear, doubt, anxiety, complaints, and all the rest of that. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Keep away from evil communicators. People who give you fear, who make you doubt. The other day somebody said, ah, there's gossip, there's gossip. I said, I'm not hearing gossip. She said, it's true. That's why your own is so different. Let me warn you. It's not as if the gossip is not happening. There's nothing there. They will say everything. But are you hearing the one thing you must hear? This is the way you go in it. Hallelujah. If you be like that, you know what they say? Fear not. Eh? We should not be dismayed. Don't be that way. It takes a being to become like that. If you fear their fear, you will die their death. It is not our portion in Jesus' mighty name. You have a form of godliness denying the power of God. It will not be our portion in Jesus' mighty name. You are called to present yourself as powerful, not powerless. Where's your power? Where's your station of power and engagement? We have people on the internet right now who represent all kinds of power. And everybody is turning their power into something they joke with or make money with. But you know what? Perhaps it's a pattern we all have to learn. Where's your power? Ask somebody. You know how children will go, see my power. Can you show someone your power? Can people see your power? Because I don't want to go there so I don't distract all of us. So even if or where you are afraid of a thing, no matter what it is, the circumstance, speak to the thing with the tongue commanded you by the force of the authority. Don't test God, test yourself and you will reproduce your testimony. This is the truth. I watched pastor, the way pastor prays. I said, God, I, I can't do what pastor does. But Lord, no, it's true. You have to know how to accept your track. But I said, God, when pastor prays, I've learned something about a formula of faith through pastor. You will pray. You pray for healing. You will then ask the person, on a scale of 100%, where are you? Correct? I can't tell you how many testimonies I have received from that. I pray for people who are not looking for prayer. My husband knows he's even fearful sometimes because I will call and say, Pastor, come. He's like, why are you doing this to me? Because I believe. If he prays, then I said, you can't keep embarrassing pastor. Pastor is shy. It's only on stage. You see him manifesting like that, but on his own, no. So I said, since I'm not this, I have to learn how to do it, but I can't do it like pastor. But God gave me how to do it through pastor's anointing and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. So that when I pray for you, there shall be an answer of peace. There shall be a manifestation. Yes, I have testimonies. I have a friend of mine. She had had this challenge of a cough that they were doing treatment for and everything and just yesterday she sent me a message Oh, she, she said by the way thank you by the way it's not by the way he is the way the truth and he healed her and that cough she said from that day you prayed I just said no she said no. she told me not she said no you know it's a it's a um, one of these uh, allergies things like that I said allergy or whatever in Jesus name what are we still waiting for the thing flew yesterday the other day at the um um, all night um, someone came to meet me quietly at the end gave me a note she said I wrote it there 
the last time you came for our women's conference, you prayed for my daughter. She had been a bedwetter for 20 years. Since that day till now, it has stopped. There is a power in you and in me. It doesn't need six packs. It just needs six inch heels. So I want to assure you, get connected to the altar and the man of God. It is working. In the name of Jesus. I always say I'm his first fruit. I'm looking at people testify. I say, God, please make me first. Why would I be pastor's wife? I cannot have these testimonies. Ah, testimonies everywhere around. I'm in the middle of it. But the middle of it is not an easy place to. Mm. Anywhere I am less than, I am still operating in fear. When I begin to decree, command and declare without fear, I become more than that situation. I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you. Test this thing, you will see the answer of peace. You will see the manifestation of your dominion. Goliath will not just fall down in death, he will bow down in submission. Because there are some enemies you don't need to kill. You just need them. Can you imagine a mighty Goliath falling around? Mama, excuse me, please. Ah. Let Goliath come and serve me in Jesus' name. Let him come and serve in this throne room in Jesus. In fact, Lord, I pray Goliath in Jesus' mighty name. We take away from them the place of pride, of self. So the call to action is this. Believe, receive, and become. John 1, 12. As many as received him, to them gave he the power, the fullness to become the sons of God. If you are not operating in fullness you are not operating in the expression of the manifestation of the son of God so are we ready are you ready to confess somebody needs to repent right now up here go ahead and just bring a prayer of repentance to God you may be a backslider you don't, you don't even call yourself a backslider but you know you've not been operating the manual of faith you've not been operating the manual in fullness there is no half measure no, 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 no. It's the full measure pressed down, running over. God wants to bestow to you and to me that we become the identity of Christ in fullness. And through the power of that fullness, we become the expression of the prophetic word of acceleration. Even in this year, in the mighty name of Jesus, he said that you become the son of God who will manifest. And we were born not of blood, not of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. By God, by God, by God, you become the manifestation of fullness. You will operate in it, say amen. You you manifest it amen for the earnest expectation of the creature even the Holy Spirit waited for the manifestation of sons of God by fullness that filleth all in all I call you out into that place and dimension of manifestation of fullness again I remind you man who is held in honor Psalm 49 20 yet lacks spiritual understanding and a teachable heart is like the beasts of the field that perish. In Jesus' name, you and I will come out of the error and come into the place of our position of fullness, with authority, with dominion, giving expression to acceleration in Jesus' name. Who would love to receive Jesus? No one, if you're going to clap, please give God praise. No, really, really, thank Him. Because the way you clap is the way you'll be celebrated just for taking His word and running with it. There's a generation, there is a generation that is going to celebrate you. Celebrate your children. Celebrate your business. Celebrate one thing, something about you. Something is going to make it what it needs to be. And all you need to do is rise up in the power of that fullness. I'm not a chicken, I'm an eagle. I'm not a chicken, I'm an eagle. You are not a chicken, you are an eagle. And honestly speaking, I want to say this in conclusion. It takes a chicken of a woman to be using her tongue to abuse her man. And provoking what to beat her up. It takes a chicken of a man to be beating up a woman because he thinks that she's more than her. You are not a chicken. You are an eagle. It takes a chicken who keeps running so that the only flight you take is a flight of fear. But it takes an eagle to come to a soaring altitude. I challenge you. Come out. Come forth. And be the eagles you are called to be. I'm not a chicken. And in Jesus' name, by the eagle flight, you will become the manifestation of his dominion. Amen. Amen. 
you are here today and this altar is calling you this altar needs you you to come just come and make that critical connection receive not just the blessing of salvation or in the place of redeeming your salvation as a backslider you are coming out here please come please come don't hold back this is not a morning to hold back it's a morning of fullness you're welcome oh to Jesus I surrender I surrender oh oh they're coming they're coming they're coming we surrender all wherever you are whatever that situation is Whatever that circumstance, we surrender all. Oh. Come and surrender. Come and give it up. 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 All to Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Reke rebosa kakakakakide rebosa. I surrender. There's more. There's more. There's more. We surrender all. Oh. We surrender. No soul is less in his sight. Who are you? Where are you? Your family needs you to come here today. Something in that matrimony, this nation, Nigeria right now, needs your submission at this altar. Because you are the answer. You are the answer. You are the answer. Whoever you are, young, old, wherever you are in Jesus' name, one more time. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, whatever in the name of Jesus, Father Lord, we thank you. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, what joy fills my soul. Let something happen right now. Even in this place of your submission, it come into the altar right now. He touched me and made me whole. There was one, just one that returned of the ten. Not only was he healed, Jesus said, where are the other nine? And he pronounced, not only are you healed, you are made every bit whole. I prophesy, by your coming out this day, this Lord's day, this service, whatever it is that has held you back, that has placed you under any kind of arrest or distress, looses you and lets you go. Yes, just like that, but right now, Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, let us profess, Lord Jesus, I embrace you, Lord and Savior. In the place of forgiveness, I ask you, forgive me. And Lord, I receive you. I reestablish my connection with you. Jesus, you are Lord, and I am thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, let's put our hands together and just thank God. Pastor will be ministering to you, with you. And Pastor, do you want to do this now? In Jesus' mighty name. And for everyone who wasn't able to come out, there is still a place for you upstairs where Pastor will be meeting you. But let me hand this over. Thank you, sir. Thank you, King of Glory. You are breaking through barriers in the precious name of Jesus. Your lives will never be the same again. We go from strength to strength in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 We are increasing in the precious name of Jesus. I declare unto you, your increase has come in the precious name of Jesus Christ.
Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you. Thank you, King of glory. I appreciate you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your daughter. Thank you. Thank you for your son. I appreciate you, God, for their lives. Thank you. I release grace, power, in the precious name of Jesus, virtue in Jesus' mighty name, even by the ministration of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, King of glory. May you enjoy and experience fullness, life to its full, in Jesus' mighty name.